Welcome to another episode of The Ted Shed. Liam, we've got a very special guest today. Yeah. How about I um, step outside and grab him? I'll get a drink. All right, cheers. Wow, Liam. Hey, how good is this? How tall is this bloke? Watch your head on the front. Yeah, six, six, <laughs> I'll get, I'll get scalped. <laughs> yeah. Just go to me over here, Paul. Oh, this one here? Right. Oh, oh, wow, look at this. Man, this is insane. Hey, Glenn. Hello, Glenn. Nice Paul, you, Paul, please meet you. People call me Birdie. Birdie? Hello, no no worries. Man, yeah, yeah, hey, mate. Mate. Good, good. Hey, this is one of those female questions, but do my ears look big in this? <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell Because we are 1.5. <laughs> we are 1.5. I'm going to be the honest. There we go. I'm not answering that question. Every time I answer those sorts of questions, I don't sleep on, <laughs> in bed. I sleep on the couch. Yeah, that's exactly right. I did a thing today filming on swags, and they are so comfortable. Oh. Ah. Absolutely. Great for a, a fella in trouble or great for a single man. <laughs> um, there's a couple of hats for you guys for our awesome. second side show. Thank you. Um, awesome. So there we go. And some face it's masks great. in case you need them. There is a, a step outside and catch nothing, Jace. Yes. <laughs> step outside gate uh, safely, Glenn. Thank I, you. I hear yes. you fall over a lot. Yes. <laughs> step outside catch fish is for you. And step outside catch fish, not COVID. Beautiful. <laughs> That's definitely not what size is COVID legal these days? Uh, but I, you know what, I don't know. I, I can't tell you. I just know your ears stick out a lot with these things. But anyway, I'll, I'll do it. Oh, hey, yeah. gentlemen, this is so good. Thank you, you for like the invite. It? Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, really hot. Yeah. Too easy. I love all the barbecues that we've got outside too, you know. <laughs> yes. You haven't seen the pizza oven yet. I'll no, but well, I saw, later. I did see the big, <laughs> it looked like a giant spider, right? Yeah. I'm just looking for the legs, this big back on it. And I yeah. saw the cold smoky yeah. machines you have there. Yeah. yeah, man. Do you do a lot of the briskets? Lots. Lots. Yeah, yeah. And we sort of, in, like we said in the last show, we invite people over and it's just a venting spot, mate. <laughs> really, that's why, we, that's why we built it. And it's yeah. just, you know. Um, obviously, in the last episode with Rob, we spoke about mental health, and yeah. it's just about bringing your mates to a bar. Yeah. Where there's not a whole heap of dickheads. Yeah. You sit down, you have a beer, and you yeah. have a chat. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? So it's so important because there's a lot of people out there who don't talk about things with their issues. Yep. You know, um, I know my brother. He had prostate cancer. Uh, he got to stage four. He survived. It's oh, wow. Great to know. But it's a kick up my ass to turn around and say, hey. You need to get your PSA levels checked. So I never used, I never even knew anything about that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. So my birthday treat for myself is to go and get a blood test. Yeah. Well, happy birthday. And, and, and no, it's not today. <laughs> I, thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to say colonoscopy. Sorry, keep going. While I was outside, so I saw one of those. <laughs> so uh, um, and, and I saw the writing on the wall. Uh, but no, <laughs> no it, it, it is one of those things, you know, to talk about. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, which is which is cool. Yeah, and that's right, man. We're not we're, we're not all invincible, right? And I think as you get on in years, you realise that. Mm. And you know, when you're twenty, you think you're invincible and you can do whatever you want. But as you get older, you do need to take care of yourself, hundred percent. You, you know? do. It's 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 a sad. St I love to surf. Yeah. And I know when you jump in off the rocks as a kid, you see the set coming. You think, yeah, I'll get out and you duck dive and you get out the back and catch a wave. Whereas now. Your, your brain goes, yep, 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 and you take the dive and your body's going, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and you, do, you do the dive and you, you're like a dugong stuck on the rocks, you know, and you get <laughs> battered by the waves and you think, oh, man, I'm getting old for this Too shit. old for this shit. It is. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Yeah, it's good. It is, yeah. And, and as Ben was saying, one of the reasons that we built the bar is just, not just for us to catch up. But we have uh, a wider community of friends here, and yeah. on Sunday afternoons, then we go, you know, on social media, bars open. Come yeah. on in. And anyone wants just to come and hang out, you know, we can just, I'd like to say, we can do something in the cooker. Yeah. Um, I've seen your shows, and I must <laughs> say that we've got a position open for a cook. If you if you want to, even, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I even want to whip up something, mate. Because so, I <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll take you up on that off. I, I bought a, 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 a smoker thing, one of those rotisseries, fifty bucks off Gumtree. Good yeah, off Gumtree. <laughs> 50 bucks, it'd been well used, and I did a, a, a pork on it last night. Yep. So good, nice. crackling. Nice. First thing I did when I bought it, was I bought a whole suckling pig from Costco. Nice, and, 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 Costco. And, oh, I love Costco, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, Costco's good. And then uh, I put a, a, an apple in its mouth, and we, you oh, know, yeah, we nice. up its date and up the mouth, and, oh. and, 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 and oh. it took half a day, but I sat there and I drank so much beer. <laughs> As, as this pig yeah. you know, did, the, did the slow spin and it had a crackle on it, it was so good. Yeah, I love nice. it, so I love my, my slow rotisserie. Yeah. But I'm happy to come and cook it. Yeah, that'd be oh, awesome. That could be another cook. show. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of drinking a lot of beer, what beer? Have you got a beer? No, I'd love a beer. What are you? Yeah, wow, so look at 
this is this is like a dream. Someone's going to kick my butt, and I'm going to wake up and go, well, <laughs> I'm at home again. But no, well, look, I'll, I'll have. I'm in Queensland. I'll have a great Northern. Done, Northern. please. So, thank you very much. No worries, man. Then that's the good thing. Um, what Glenn normally does on the taps is has a dark and a light, but yeah, we right. switch them up. So yeah. different types all the time. So oh, great idea. I'm not yeah. racist. No, <laughs> we, 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 we are not. Not at all. See, I have a black and a white face mask. Exactly, exactly. Just to be on the same side of it. Everything's good. Uh, uh, cheers, boys. No, no, cheers. Cheers. Let, me, so let me get a I'm beer. On, I'm on the soft Oh Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. That's good. Quickly uh, sneak one in. Yeah, Des- I'm on drive to fly. Designated driver. Don't so, worry about me. I'll start That's off with the, with the first question. So, yeah, hopefully a lot of people have seen Step Outside with Paul Burke. It's a, a great show. Thank you. Um, I'm not a fisherman, right? But I love watching it because I uh, own a jet ski, live in southeast Queensland. And just, I don't know, you... <laughs> Cheers, yeah, Good on you, buddy. Nice. You must spend, um, I don't know, so many times your footage is gorgeous, right? And it's glassy Gold Coast seaways. And that's when I love to get out on a jet ski, you know, it's a nice time. It always seems quite, so I love the show just for seeing what we have in southeast Queensland. And obviously, you know, you yeah. travel in the northern New South Wales where yeah. you can. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, I was saying to Glenn, like the footage is just amazing. Especially when you, you go off to those outer reefs. Oh. I think there was one east, was it like a bird island or something? It was me? bird island. That, that was, yeah. man, that, the history of that, it put me back into my boots of how insignificant we are as a as a human race into the ocean of of, of nature and the way it works is yeah. you know we're in this spot um and it's three and a half kilometers deep wow and it's called the cato trench yeah and back in the early 1800s so captain cook obviously you know started to navigate he navigated the east coast of australia yep um and the french did a bit of the west coast and there was a, a bit of a uh thing between the French and the English as to whether Australia was one complete uh, continent or was it was oh. it two? You know, yep. we did it go from Adelaide up to the tip, yep. or was it one? So there was a race. So they had a bloke, French had a bloke, and we had Matthew Flinders. So Matthew Flinders came in around Perth through Adelaide to bite and work out that it's one giant island, so to speak. Yeah. So he got back to Botany Bay. His boat was a useless thing. And uh, he jumped on as a passenger on these other three ships that were making their way back to England. He had to take his papers back to get them stamped. And because he travelled, he's such an amazing navigator, um, Matthew Flinders was, that he wanted to call Australia, Australia. Right? Oh, back really? Then, yeah, back then it wasn't oh, Australia. Wow, right? yeah. No, so right. he named Australia, Australia. Oh, wow. Bit under the names of the stars, Australis. Yep. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So right. he, he named it. But on his venture back up on these three ships, they went out away from the East Coast Current. They knew the East Coast Current was very strong and it would take them forever to get back against it. Yeah. But they went out between Australia and New Caledonia. Mm. But they ran across this Cato Trench and then these little isles, being Bird Isle, They've slammed in, so the first boat hit it, which is oh, his boat. Second, wow. they, they fire a cannon because there's no electricity, they just have candles going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Second, so they ran at night. Correct, yeah, 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 absolutely. So they've hit the, uh, and they're, they're dropping the lead weight on the string, you know, seeing how deep, deep it is. Yeah, Three and a half kilometres, they're going, well, there's nothing out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And boom, they hit this, this coral owl. So they fire a cannon, the second boat hears the cannon, goes, Jesus, he, so he's gone port. Yep. Boat behind him's gone starboard. Yeah. But something was, they were going to hit something or other. So the second boat ran aground. Oh, the third wow. boat made it. Third boat went around and, and sort of anchored and thought everyone was all lost. Yeah. They took off. Wow. So Matthew Flinders is now with his charts, right? The French are now also on the other side of the country trying to race back to call it. That's, yeah, I've got to go. We may not have been here if it wasn't nah. us. Anyway, no. we're we. We're we. We're we. We're we. We're we. We're we. And drinking wine. Anyway, oh, so, all right. That's all right. <laughs> so, so he, right, he stayed on this island and rowed his boat back to Botany Bay, commandeered another boat, went back, rescued the 80 sailors from out there. From out there How far is that? 650 kilometres off. He the rowed coast. a boat. He rowed his boat, made a little makeshift sail. Right, and got back to Botany Bay. 650 yeah, that... All the way back to Sydney. Wow. And commented another boat, got back, long story short, made it to England, sent the papers, Australia. No wow. way. Wow. So when we went out there, right, and not many people get there, there's the coal from his boat that ran aground and still being washed up. There's the anchor. There's all this coal, big wow. chunks all washed up on the beach. There's wow. the copper plating that kept the 
um, hold together to yep. stop the worm from getting into the timber yeah, yeah, yeah. on this little bird isle that would be a, a Hiroshima if when a cyclone came through there. Wow. So, and here we are, we're, we're on this bird isle and where Matthew Flinders ran aground and there's where they sat and there's where people waited for wow. two months to get rescued. What year was that? Sorry, Jason. No, I'm just saying. I'm yeah, I'm a race too. Yeah, I'm back in the on his road. Back, like, how do you even Still navigate in a road? Mate, road? They're, they're so amazing. They're, these, they're, 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 they're the best navigators back in their time. Uh, Captain Cook, Matthew Flinders, yeah. and yeah. William Bly. Yeah. All off the stars, right? Correct. Yeah. And they, oh, you, wow. they did have a compass back then as well, okay. so they could they could get their bearings. Yes. But, uh, but um, <laughs> yeah, so that was back in I don't know maybe 18 somewhere 1810, 1820, somewhere. Wow. Yeah, a long time ago. A, a, a incredible history. That's and that's insane. where we were. Uh, and the last time someone human were, was on this isle was uh, 18 months ago. Yep. And the birds didn't even know what people were. Like these massive gannet birds would walk up within six inches from you and look up at you and they just put their head down and just walk away. Right. Wow. Because there's no fear to humans, right? Correct. Because they yeah, don't know what yeah, they don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. Well, what were you doing there? Fishing. Do you fishing? <laughs> yeah, right. And, catch cook, and cooking. Did you catch it? Yes. Oh, that's good. Yes. yes. You were yeah. there, obviously. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> the only way I'm catching fish is I go to the fish and shop. <laughs> I don't even know how to put bait on a hook. I can't even take uh, like, no, fishing. Yeah. Really? Yeah, no, I, yeah. my That's dad so wasn't a fisherman, hey, and, and I missed that part. It's so <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's, no. it's, which is a real big fishing town, Paul. It is, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. you, you get a lot of carp, you get a lot of, a lot of um, you know, Cat eels fish. and caddies. <laughs> well, I was say, I don't know if anyone would be game to drop a line in the, in the Bremer or the Brisbane River. Well, the Bremer the actually has uh, sharks. You get yes. bull sharks yes. where, yes. Where, it, where it meets into the salinity. And the brackish water, is that right? Brackish water, because um, bull sharks are found like 400 miles up the Amazon. Wow. In, in fresh brackish slash fresh water. And they wow. just meander through the weed and eat the fish and, and obviously so, they're really poor ice. So everyone really who goes, ice I was gonna say, everyone who drops in and takes their dog or goes swimming at Colo. Oh. Or is it, um, yeah, yeah. I think it's, no, College is Crossing. College is Crossing. Mm. Yeah. You'd be taking your chances there. Bull sharks there, right? College is Crossing is, is well known bull shark spot. Wow. Do you yeah. fish for bull sharks? I do. Do you? And they're great to eat. They're great oh, really? Eat. Absolutely. I did a thing on our show okay. uh, where we, 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 uh, we named it <laughs> Shark Bites. It's time we bit back, oh, right? Because right, sharks right. are always biting us. Yeah. So, thought, <laughs> so we, we'd catch a shark and clean it and cut it up little bits and then cook them. It's flake, up. right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But what, right. I love, what I love is, um, you know, probably blokes cooking. You know, we'll, we'll grab the air fryer out and frozen, you know. Love the air fryer. What about how he's cooking the air fryer? Oh, we won't. Yeah, we'll talk about it, that. Yeah, that's another <laughs> side. One of my mates, right? Yeah. Yeah. Side, sorry, Jason. Potato gems. <laughs> was, we had some friends over, right? But yeah. it just got finished. And I was like, Howie, can you look after the potato jets? Yeah. Back to my knees in the air fryer. it, comes out, sticks on the plate, it was like a big bowl of mashed potato. <laughs> like, <clears throat> don't know how. Yeah. Anyway, so, sorry, so, Jason. No, so, you're a solid unit of. It was, yeah, it was yeah. Because we just ate it. <laughs> yeah, and it was basically like a mountain. Everyone just grabbed a fork and put some Absolutely, off. yeah. Put some salsa <laughs> on top, guacamole, you know, a couple of chips in it. Yeah, but it. The thing that, it, that I took away, like I said, I love about the show, mm. is not being a fisherman, but the cooking tips. Mm. And I don't know how much editing's in there, but it just looks so simple. It, and that's why we like it. I mean, I, I'm a fisherman, I'm a very simple man, but yeah. I find if you can put something together without having a 50,000 ingredients, I think if you need to add a lot of ingredients, it shouldn't be cooked naturally, because yeah. you don't need to add that much taste or flavour to something that tastes good by itself. Yeah. Yeah. So keep it really simple, and if I can do it, hell, I know I can. Yeah, oh, exactly. Nice. I see the ones nice. even when you made, um, I think it might have been that shark bite one, or you were yeah. doing, uh, you just had the bags. Yeah. I think you had the flour in one, bread comes yeah. in the other. Yeah. Just mix in the egg with some water. I can it bag, shake it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you chuck it in the pan, and what was coming out? I was sitting there just going, oh my God, this is amazing. It was cool. And it's easy. Yeah. It was quick and easy. So, Super easy. Yeah, it just sort of encouraged me to stop going just from the frozen fish fillet in the box, chuck it in the yeah. air fryer. So, yeah. Actually, spending five minutes of cooking a meal, it's like... You, should, you know, you can try it. Even if you go to a, a shop and get some fillets of fish, like tuna, whether it's tuna or, or maybe uh, I don't like a tuna. trevally. Catfish, mate. No, okay. No, so no, no, no. Fresh tuna. Oh, no, I don't eat tuna. It smells like cat food. Oh, really? Oh, oh that's another story for that. There's a reason. That. Glenn, there's a reason for that. The yellowfin tuna mm. that you get close to the coast <laughs> is full of... And my wife's the same. She won't eat that sort of... Uh, that localised fish because... They eat, they, 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 their diet is small pilchards, right? right? Right. So they taste like cat food. Yeah. Whereas if you get the fish further out in the ocean, 
they're eating the squids, they're eating the uh, ocean fish that yeah. aren't so pilchered juicy. Yeah. And right. they taste so much no, amazing. They're taken. Oh. We've got to go 480 kilometers yeah. out to Bird Island. And Absolutely. I'm gonna roll a boat. You know. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of boats, <laughs> Sorry, yeah. no, no, okay, fair enough. Because good. Yeah. my partner, she yeah. eats the tin, right? All yeah, the yeah. crackers, and I'm like, yeah. Oh, the, no, 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 that tuna. No, 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 get real tuna. <laughs> get real tuna. Like it's fresh, red. It's that color. Is that? Is it? Yes. And then. If the shoulder, just, isn't it? We the shoulder. The shoulder. The shoulder. Yeah, the shoulder. You have shoulders in it, arms. Yeah, they do. No, no. So where the, where the head is, and then it runs down to the tail. The top section is the shoulder, oh. and that is the best oh. eating part of the fish. And if you just thinly slice it, put that on a plate, lay it out. Then you get some soy sauce yeah. and some wasabi. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Put a little drop of wasabi there. Soy sauce. But when you get your ginger and in the packets, put a bit of the ginger sauce into the soy sauce. Okay. Oh, yeah. A bit of the liquid. Mix it around and just lay it out there. Just watch the show, mate. No, no, we're gonna do it. So yeah, that's, that's we're what we're gonna have a whole. We're gonna watch the show and we're gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. and that's why I All love right. the show. Like I said, I'm not a fisherman, yeah. but mm. just seeing Southeast Queensland and surrounds, um, you know, and then things like even I think one of the other stories I saw, which you know, being a tech guy, the drone. Yeah, you know, dropping those. Like, how, how cool is that? You know. So you obviously having to do the hard yards out yeah, in the I, 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 Yeah, I did, um, I did my commercial drone licence. Right. Ah. right. So I, I can legally fly for our show when, you know, you've got to register with um, CAS and all these people. Yeah. Is, uh, oh, so those drone shots on the show, you, you can do those things. Yeah, right? I, can, I can legally fly my right, drone. Yeah, right. um, but, you know, th there's still been mishaps uh, of, of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of drone. I think everyone... So, you know when they say to become an experienced person in many things, you've got to make a lot of mistakes. Oh, yeah, yes. 10,000 hours? You've got to do something for 10,000 hours to be an expert at it. Yeah, well, that, yeah. Yeah, well uh, that, yeah. the first two hours of flying a drone, one went down into the water, the other oh, one went up into a tree. Oh, no. and, you know, so things like that happen. Oh. I, think everyone's, I think everyone's done the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's why we have real expensive studio equipment here. <laughs> yeah. A few mishaps. Mate, I've got to say, this is the best studio I have ever been in. This is amazing. We yeah, have a studio you. at home that has just accumulated so much stuff. Yeah, yeah. but this is just awesome. And yeah. I've just realised that the pool pump's still on too, so we're probably picking up the audio of that. Oh yeah, let me that, get on that. That's hidden that. over there in the corner. Let me take oh, that look, hold on. So, because this, this was literally yeah. a race ship, right? Yeah. So it's... Oh, you can race cars. Yeah, so you can is see right? the, yeah, the feature yeah. winner and all the trophies up here. And okay. the wall, yeah. the midgets. So, so this used to be... Speedway. Yes, yes. Yeah. This, yeah, this is where the race cars used to sit. So, yeah. there's a wall in here, because the, the shed's actually much longer. Yeah, right. But a, a, a temporary wall was put in the middle there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this became the shed. Mm. Unbelievable. And, and you got, um, who are they? What AFL teams? Oh, are? that's, oh, that's it's, it's based off, yeah, but it's West Coast Eagles. West Coast Eagles. Right. Yeah, but that's okay. my that's my home club that I played footy for. Is that right? Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. so I captained that side in 209. Yeah. Right. And then when I left, I retired in 209 because I was 29 and I was old. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> right. okay. Anyway, okay. probably okay. glad I did because I started my own business then. And yeah, okay, good. Kids right, and you know all that stuff, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, it's just a bit of a bit of a thing I can show the kids and, and say. And, and your team now is still West Coast? Collingwood. Collingwood. Oh, hey, you know what? I'm going to say last <laughs> night and, and recent and, and in recent <laughs> times, you know, Vanilla David is that I, I for once, I, I've never barracked for Collingwood, yep. but I barracked for Collingwood against Richmond. Yeah, I and think and welcome to the team. Team. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we were cheering. I mean, I'm a nice. Geelong supporter. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, right. right. Uh, I married into the, being a Queensland. It was always you know the, the Broncos, and I went to the Cowboys many years ago. <coughs> yeah, and then uh, I married a, a, a Melbourneite, and of yeah. course then Geelong came through. So I yeah. really moved into that genre. But um, Collingwood last night, or playing, yes. with, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. uh, Richmond was yeah. was my was my awesome. It was a good game. Good yeah. game. It was a good game. Awesome have a, game. Have a win after a tough year. I don't think we're going to win another game this year. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I think yeah. Buckley sitting at home would be going. Where the hell was this when I was when I was coaching? You know? Yeah, and I think uh, you know it's players that move into coaching roles, and I'm nothing against Buckley. I think he's great, but I don't think they have the full effect that a normal coach would. Mm. It's like a school teacher. If your dad teaches you at school, you're going to always push the boundaries a little bit. Yeah. And you know he's been a past player. Where when you get a coach that hasn't been a player, or yeah. there's that, you know. And, and a new person as well. It's like if you get a new teacher at school, you sit up straight, you look forward. You know, you do. there's that stuff, yeah, right? So I think it's good it. for the culture of the club. But even um, Collingwood's last game, everyone said they'll go above and beyond to win it for Buckley. You go, we should yeah. be doing that every weekend, though, guys. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's like it's everything, Jason. It's like your job, mate. You know, yeah. when you start out your first day at a new job, yeah. 
Well, yeah, you it's busted, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Five years into it, yeah. you're not playing for That's your it. boss anymore. But no, mind you, if someone's no. paid me a couple of million you know, yeah. a year to run around <laughs> and kick a footy, I, I, I think I'd be a little enthusiastic. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we are talking AFL, not NRL, because yes. the NRL players, I think they get paid too much money and they're too young, and obviously yeah. you know, it's, a di- it's a different business model. Well, I don't think they get the right coaching either to have that much money at that age. Mm. So I think the AFL, because I went through when I was younger, almost yeah. made it to the big top. Yeah. And we had a lot of coaching about media. We had a lot yeah. of coaching about how you act in public. We had yeah, a lot wow. of coaching leading into that. So if you did go to the big time, yeah. you were somewhat acquitted to say, right, well, okay, I'm going to get paid 300 grand a year. Yeah. I'm not going to go and piss it up against the wall or end up at the no. casino pissing in the corner or doing whatever. Yeah. Where I think the NRL, and I haven't had experience with the NRL structure, but I don't think it's as good as no. other, other codes in Australia. No. Yeah. No, which is a... You can see that because a lot of people get in strife, they get in trouble. Yeah. It, it, look, it's always you get you know painted with a brown brush. Is yeah. If yeah. you if you get, it takes <coughs> one to put a tarnish over lot, over many others. And yeah. it's the same as you're fishing. If you're fishing off a jetty and someone leaves some stinky old you know squid packets on the jetty, yeah. then they close the jetty down from the other five hundred anglers who do the right thing. Do yeah. the right. Well, jet skis are like that. So, I mean, I know oh, that. absolutely. <laughs> Uh, jet ski, jet skis, jet skis, in, skis in general are pain yeah. in the ass. Yeah, I was going to say, you've got one, haven't you? I've got a jet ski. Yeah. Okay. Right. And see, the other thing is, I take it out and I use it. Yeah. Um, well, mine's fast, and it you is know, fast. It, it's, it's incredible. Um, but, you know, on the Gold Coast Seaway, there's rules, right? It's yeah, so right. far from the bank, you've obviously got, you know, yeah, restricted yeah. speed limit. But if we want to go fast, we can go out to, like, Wyvernhoe. Yeah. Where it's unrestricted. We're not oh, restricted okay. to 40 knots. Right. So we can open this thing up 125. Like just, wow. Just That's right. So is yeah. yours a Sea-Doo or a Yamaha? Yeah, it's a Sea-Doo. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so we can open it up and, and do that safely in that environment. Yeah. But, you know, it's like with anything, you've got to be responsible whether you're a car driver, a boat owner, a jet ski owner. Yeah, you do. Um, but I think, I think what it's happens, true. I mean, and the government's obviously even got that, that different license requirement for a jet ski. But so yeah. many people I see... Um, which I feel lets the jet ski community down. It's I'm yeah. responsible if I take my kids and we're going to Tiplers, we abide by all the signs and, and the rules. Of course. But then you just see someone else like you're yeah, straight off the shore, full full tilt. Right out. Yeah. You know, or, the you know, they're yeah. just just doing reckless things and you just go And you feel embarrassed as a as a jet ski owner, driver, yeah. and rider that when you pull up people are giving you that side look <laughs> yeah. of you know, oh, you're uh, a jet ski you're, my kids yeah. are swimming yeah. here. Yeah. And, and yeah. as you said, because people only remember that idiot on the jet ski who did something stupid. Correct. Mm. And all of a sudden we're all tarred and feathered with the same. But for mm. me, yes. that's a, a, a watercraft that I can take out by myself. Yeah, I can take my good. kids. Yeah. You know, and like a lot of them people now putting all the, the um like the fish setups on the back and Cedar's even selling I the fish have one. Yeah. I have the fish pro. So <laughs> yeah, I'm a jet ski rider. Yeah, 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 absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, no, I do. You must have a split. <laughs> there split he is. I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're cool. They're, they're, they are great. They're easy yeah. to use. They're, they're, they're cheap to run. They're fast <laughs> to get to a spot where you want to get to. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, the, the, there's a lot of upsides. There's also a few downsides. So the downsides would be you're open to the elements. You, you're going to mm. get wet. You're going to get salty. You're going to get crusty when you're fishing. Yeah. Yes, the sun. And of course, you also get sharks. And I've been, I've been, I've oh, been really? out. Oh, man. We've been out fishing. Right? I'll travel on mine 70, 80 k's out, out to sea off Morton and targeting our big fish and all that. And we'll always oh, yeah. carry extra fuel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you're pulling up tuna. And I remember having my young fella with me. And we were playing this, this good tuna. And as it's come up beside the boat, I'm going, yeah, this shark has come out from nowhere. And just turned side on. You see its mouth open up like oh. this. Eat the tuna, and we're looking at my son is on my back. Wow. Like, hanging on to me for dear life. Absolutely. Yeah, and the, and the ski's sort of tipping over, and the shark's just, it just ate the tuna just like it was a jelly bean. Just and then just came past, and just, just in his big black eye the size of the tin, you know, just, <laughs> just looking at you. So we just started up and left. But wow. That happens. Jesus Christ. That happens, right? I haven't but seen any cool. sharks at Somerset, Paul. So. No, 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 you won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to the It's cooler. Wow. Yeah. But you know you're alive when that stuff happens. Jesus it puts in that, like, Christ. Because like, a jet ski is not a small personal craft either. Right? They're when, big. When we park it in our garage next to the car, it's the yeah. full length of the, of the right. garage yeah. next to my wife's car. You sort of get an appreciation for size. Size, yeah. yeah. But when you're up against a shark like that and you feel oh. small. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Wow. There's, a, there's a lot of big creatures out there. Yeah. So you do feel <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. a little bit sort of intimidated. Wow. Did you hear about the guy that got swallowed by a whale? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, last, was on last week. week? Yeah, last yeah. Shut the gate. 60 minutes last night. He got swallowed by a yeah. whale. Yeah, and then yeah. got out. 
had it's a dive through the bottom. No, he had air. He, he was a scuba diver diving for crayfish in America. <laughs> Serious story. In Massachusetts, I think it was. Oh, right? yeah. and, well, I don't know. Is that inland? Do they have whales in the... In the no, no, anyway, no. back to my story. Yeah, 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 yeah your story. Yeah, your, your story, story sucks, sucks mate. Oh, <laughs> so anyway, this is off 60 Minutes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, he's diving <laughs> for craze. Yeah. And he said, next minute everything just went black. So I got hit by something. Everything went black. He said, I just got down there. So I had 50 minutes of air. So he said he just sat in the jaws and waited for the whale to have enough to spit him out. It, kid. Ah. No. No, yeah. Would you? No. 50 never, minutes. I never, no. I, no. Yeah. I never, the, the whale's not swallow? It no, be, well, he's saying that a whale's can only swallow this much. Right. So, so I'll make sure to like break his legs and chew him apart. And he said he was in there and he could feel all the muscles contracting. And he goes, man, I just got to sit in here. He goes, I can't get out. Something no great. way. Honest, oh. honest story, yeah. Dude. Well, oh, honest, oh, honest story on 60 minutes. <laughs> oh. Hang on, that's a media. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, sorry. Media tells the truth <laughs> all time. Yeah. Yeah. So I know what he really did. Seven tonight, anyway. He got his video <laughs> camera and he's there and he just puts his hand over it. He goes, everything went dark, sat there, and then that's he, it. all of a sudden just comes back out. You go, oh, would you believe that? Yeah, yeah I don't know. No, look, it's, it's probably it's true. Yeah. That's not a story. You wouldn't make a story up like that, would you? Well, you wouldn't. I, wouldn't I, just think think so. I just think as when you're a kid, you watch the cartoons and you'd see like Popeye sitting there going down the boat in the... <laughs> The throat of a whale, this candle going, you know, yes. going right down into the dome, and then you see like, you know, the old pirate sitting there with his bones and the gold hanging off his chain. Was the back of the neck always had like the little punching bag? Yeah, trying to it. <laughs> and then he goes out through the hole. Oh, <laughs> so that's what I like. The study or show is really personal, which I think. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah, no yeah, photos of, of you. It was it yeah. your dad. And yeah, it's my grandpa. There. Oh, your oh, grandpa. That's your grandfather. Yeah, and then yeah. you're sitting there like you know pulling stuff out of the sand. Yeah, so, so that's the question. So. Before, you know, obviously everyone knows you from, you know, the, the weather. Yeah. Um, I've got a challenge for you later too. Okay. <laughs> Don't let me forget that one. All right. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, obviously everyone knows you from, you know, obviously you step outside with Bird or from yeah, the, yeah. The, the weather. Yeah. Like, what was your childhood like? Where did you grow up? Obviously, were you a Queensland boy born yeah, in Bird? Yeah, yeah. I was born at a place on called the Burn, Burner. Oh, oh, you're a Burner boy. boy! Hey! So sorry. Hey! <laughs> How the hell did you get into fishing from Boona? Exactly, right? This is the thing. When you say there's nothing at Ipswich, I'm like, come on, boys, turn the freaking thing up because it's bullshit. It's Boona. It's Boona's it's in the Boona West. Yeah. It's always the self-deprecation of it. Yeah, it is. No, Boona, Boona, so my dad was in earth moving and yep. um, built roads. So he was out there building a road or like whatever he did. And mum, you know, lived on the Gold Coast. So we basically, mum went out there to have me and I was born at Boona Hospital and within yeah, about nice. two days, we came back home to the Gold Coast. Ah, so, so you're a very short timer. Very, in absolutely. But I still go to the show there not long ago and uh, checking out the Boona show and yeah. uh, went to the pub and had lunch. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. Just to contribute a little bit more back to the local economy. That's what it's yeah. about, man. Absolutely. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah. but it is lovely. It, in Maroon Dam and Mulgra Dam, yeah. great fishing spots. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, lots of bass. Great really? jet ski lakes as well. Oh, it's, it's, it's a good yeah. What did you say? Great jet ski lakes. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I was still listening yeah. to Bernie when he's fish. A yeah. couple yeah. of lakes it's out there, you can, once again, if you you've can. got a jet ski and you want to go fishing, God. you can do it on those lakes. Yeah. yeah. Just got to watch, the, the, you got to check the, the dam levels because there's a lot of timber. Yeah. They can hang just below the, mm. the top. And if, it, if the sun gets down quick, which it does during certain times of the year, yeah. Yeah. is that if you, if you don't run off your GPS chart plotter, because you'll have a a line that charts the way that you've gone before to get to these locations, yeah. that if it gets dark and you think, oh, there's a, 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 you know, a car light over there, I'm going to go straight to it, you could be going through a forest of dead timber. Wow. Yeah. You can easily get hit. So I think Wilbur's yeah, wow, pretty okay. low. Like, yeah. Wilbur has suffered low dam levels for quite a while. Yes. Um, I think Maroon Dam's a bit higher yeah, than that. Maroon, yeah, it got a bit higher, but all the fish yeah. got concentrated in, in Maroon at one stage because um, the water dropped, but the old riverbed well, that's the deepest part. So all the fish go there, and you, right. you could have you could have caught fish on on a, on a nut. Really, there's so many fish. Mind wow. you. So, and I've got to ask you a question. So Sorry. once again, I was telling Glenn before you arrived today. Yeah. Um, it's not uncommon to see you off the back of your boat, yeah. right, pulling in a fish. Yeah. And then you just go, oh, hang on, I've got another one. Yeah. And then while you're pulling that in, oh, there's another one you're trying to grab. Yeah. It's like most of us can sit out there for hours and not catch a fish. Yeah. And you're there showing up going, hang on, I've only got two <laughs> arms, but I've got three fish on the game. Give me one of these. I don't know. You know, when I was a, I was a kid, um, I had zero idea what I wanted to be. I, I, I love cooking. I went and... I went and did cooking at the Hyatt Regency for nearly four years, hated the chef left. Oh, so, really? Yeah, absolutely. So I did it all in seafood, right? So yeah, I, learned, right. I learned a lot about seafood, how to handle seafood, cook seafood, clean seafood, respect seafood. 
Yes. Um, so I did all that stuff. Anyway, um, and then I went and worked with my brother in tackle shops and, and then went and started my own charter boat up, obviously, ah. and, and started in that realm. But, ah. but beforehand, my uncle and auntie had a house at Facing Island opposite Curtis Island at Gladstone. Yep. So we would go up there a lot as a kid. My brother, Dougie, who owns a Tackle World store on yeah. the coast, we would row this boat out there and the sharks had come up with the, the cod and the trout and the, everything. The fishing was intense. Yeah. Wow. It was great. So That's we learned. Cool. Oh, what age? Lines. Oh, we've been seven. Wow. Oh, wow. Six or seven. I learned how to catch beach rooms when I was four, five. With wow. my toes when I was nine. Man. You yeah. have, and like we said before, you. Born yeah. for two days, yeah. and to the coast, right? Yeah. So that's your heart. Yeah, the coast. So there's your ten thousand hours. You've exceeded that. So the reason you're pulling <laughs> fish is because you know that's your question, Jace. I think maybe I don't know. It's just one of those things that happens. You know, you, yep. you know, some days you're off and some days you're on. Right. But yeah. I'm saying, but you know, and I think this is what you share on the show, right? Mm. Um, it's obviously you've got to have the right gear. Yeah. You're using technology like your, your depth finders to, to yeah. find things. So yeah. you're knowing when tides are coming in and out, you're changing yeah. sinkers. And so someone like me, if I went fishing, would probably go buy the cheapest line I could find with one sinker, throw it out. Yeah. Right. But you're you're changing weights of sinkers. Yeah. I think you're like on the back of the Gold Coast somewhere in an episode and the, the tide yeah. was changing. Yeah. Um I think you were chasing whiting. Yes. And and I joked to myself when I saw that, you go, why do you paint the top of your lines white? And I go, it's because he's catching whiting. <laughs> <laughs> But watching that, <laughs> sorry, boy. sorry, dad jokes. Um, but that's not really even a dad joke. <laughs> was a dad bad? Yes. But I think oh, no, I got a joke book here somewhere. Oh yeah, yeah. you write that one down. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. yeah. But sorry. you're yeah. you're changing, and it's your experience is why you're catching those fish, I guess. Because someone like yourself, you're using the wrong bait, the wrong line, you know, and even like the wrong anchor, uh, weight. Yeah, yeah. And the thing's just sitting on the bottom. You're not going to catch it. Right. Well, you, 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 or you just the thing flying. is, you, you're fishing in an area where there's 272 or thousand registered boats in South East Queensland alone. The highest amount of registered boats per capita in the Southern Hemisphere. Is that right? Yeah. It is 272 or thousand. Oh, 72. Yeah. Registered yeah. craft. <coughs> Sunshine Coast, Gold Coast, Ipswich, Logan, Brisbane. Wow. Yeah. Huge, right? Yeah. So you've got all those boats. And then you've got people who just fish off the bank who don't own a boat, and there's a hell of a lot of them, one in every three families or something. So you've got all that pressure being put into that spot. So you, the idea is the fish is still there, but you just got to change your way. Instead, instead of going heavy with a big ball sinker, which is what we used to do when you catch fish, is now go lighter. You know, the fish is still there. Yeah. You just got to be a little bit smarter. So when the current's running, go a little bit heavier. Yeah. You know, paint the rod tip white so you can see that little drum roll of the whiting when he bites you see it bouncing you know yeah if it's dark and you can't see your rod tip you're going to miss that bite and then you're sitting there for the next 20 minutes with a bare hook no bait yeah right. oh. you know <laughs> that's enough <laughs> biting <laughs> they don't bite metal apparently no and when the when the current slows right up change your sinker from heavy to lighter lighter eventually it'll be the size of like a a small dried pea yeah wow. you know it's the same as snapper out on the reef you know years ago the pat nosser reef with a big weight down the bottom and three hooks coming off yeah that still works at times, but if you go a ball sinker straight down to a whole pilly or a half pilly and cast it upstream and just let it feed down gently and let that sinker get to the bottom and that pilly just slowly waves down the current, the bigger fish will hit it because he's he's not it's not it's not weighted, it's not yeah. heavy, he's looking at it and thinking, oh, yeah, I've seen that every day. Yeah. yeah. You've got to trick yeah. the fish. My yeah. mate, my so mate saw... got taken yesterday looking at that. <laughs> Did he? You know, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh. He's in the water. <laughs> yeah. My brother got taken up there <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. touching Red, that. Red's gone. <laughs> fish talk. Red's yeah. out of here. So, but that's <laughs> something I actually loved in the, um, in my, I think it was actually a couple of episodes, those big long clear tanks. Yeah. When you pull in the, is it the lures? Yes. And then you just see, because obviously above the water, you don't yeah. see what's happening, but no. when you're watching those, and the way that they would skim along and then dart, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously replicating a live fish. And then you see the other fish in the tank sort of go, hello, and they start to show If you can interest. trick a fish in the tank to eat a, a, a lure, yeah. you, you're doing the right retrieve. Yeah, and right. you could do that on that. Like you could just flick the lure different ways and, and then you remember, I've got to do that next time you go fishing. Yeah. Because as, as, like I said, as someone awesome, who doesn't yeah. fish, I mean, I'll go to um, you know, like Anaconda. Yeah. Um, and have a look at the stuff because I like camping with the family. Yeah. But you see like the fish section and you just go, yeah. oh, it's, no a idea. it's a magnet. It's just <laughs> like, how would you know what rod to pick and like, and then all the tackle and everything else, you just go, yeah. wow, that's just a whole different world. It is, yeah. yeah. It, and it's um, it's quite daunting for a lot of people. So our, our show of Step Outside is, we, there's 
you know, 5% of people know what they're doing. Yep. They're keen, they know the tide, they know the moon, they know what the weather's doing, they know if there's a westerly or a southerly, where they're going to anchor. They, 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 those guys have, have done the hard yards and yep. we, we leave they're them the alone. They're the poor birds of the world. Well, they wouldn't even go that far. <laughs> we, 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 we leave them alone. Oh, you leave them alone? Yeah, they're, 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 they're cool to do their own thing. You know, yep. They don't want to be shown, they're fine. Yeah. But oh. the, other, the other 95% of the people who want to get to that stage is, is my target audience. Yeah, yeah, that's your target Mind audience. Mind you, there's a few boys down in Ballina that can catch a fish. Yeah, they, they are so good. They're just local oh, lads. Okay, There's yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Jay and Sean and Jack and can't remember, but they, 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 those boys are so cool. They just fish off the bank, local fellas, yeah. and they catch big fish. They're like pulling your kids in bank. on a line, mate. These really? Yeah. Are, Jew fish and, yeah. and wow. big Mulloway mangrove jacks. We did a mangrove jack shoot with them, and if you catch a mangrove <coughs> jack in one one session off the bank, and if you catch one fish, you know you, you're amazing. doing you're doing well. Yeah, mate, sure. Doing well. we yeah, got, absolutely. We got, we got, we got six wow. like, with these guys, and they were just like, yes, yeah, a normal night. We let them go. Yeah. But these guys are just, and they gave us their their tips and hints on how other people who are watching can go, I'm going to try that. And this is the thing. Our show isn't like a <coughs> Creek to Coast, Weekender, Queensland based. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we shoot here. Yeah. But we are on that, that perfect lateral line across the country that if you go two hours north, two hours south, you're in that different water temp. So you can ah. go and catch coal trout, you can go and get your kingfish. Ah. And then if people over in Perth or up off Carnarvon Gorge or Darwin, whatever, they can go, well, I don't, you know, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna go to Morton Bay to catch a jewfish. Yeah. But they go, right, the rig that they use to catch a jewfish, we got jewfish in our harbour, I'm going to try that rig, I'm going to try that rod, I'm going to try that hook up and that, ta that terminal tackle. Yeah. Yep. And I'm going to go and use that in my area. Yeah. So it allows us, we don't have to go zooming around the country. Yeah. But you do spend a bit of time away though, right? You do off golf and do. So when yeah, you would do something like if you took um, your boat out, would you shoot multiple episodes on like a trip or different segments yeah. in that one trip? So yeah. if you're spending the four days out at sea somewhere, yeah. shooting different segments and then yeah. come back. So Whatever, yeah. you know, it's it's okay. it's a bit of pre-planning there, but it's it's all what you get on the day that's happening, you take advantage of it. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So you talk about like your the family. Tension. Sorry? It's a bit like the tension. A bit like the tension. We shoot when we can. Yeah. Um, we so you've got a young family. Yeah. Um, or you know, they're, they're obviously growing a bit now. Yeah. So your work obviously takes you away. Yeah. And a lot of your broadcast work is weekends. Yeah. Does that take away from your like well, your family time? Because obviously your kids aren't in school on weekends. Yeah. So. Well, Gold Coast. So we do Gold Coast news. There is actually a Channel Seven Gold Coast news. Yeah. Um, that and so we do the weather down there Tuesday through to Friday. Ah. Every every night. That's where I've seen you. No. I'm yeah. No, that's what. <laughs> I'm joking. No. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. So that's Tuesday to Friday. That's <laughs> cool. Just that's good. But Friday, Saturday, is <laughs> Brisbane. Yeah. And, 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 and that's it. That's fun. Yeah, that's fun. No, I have said it. Right. No. So look, on that, it means you got a life when you're when you're not seen us. It's good. So no, 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 no. Don't watch TV, mate. No. And I've it. I've seen it's you good. do the weather live a couple of times. Yes, sir. So and so this is why I've, I've got a challenge for you if you're up for it. Shit, can I have another beer, mate? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so, it's all right. So one of the things that struck me watching you do a live cross. Yes. Thank is, you very much, mate. Right. Cheers. Thank you. Um, that coaster you can take home too. Really. Yes. I won't say no. Thank you so much. Is, which, um, camera, which camera area. are we looking at? Well, S for sponsors, it's like yeah, you can do beer, that beer from up here. <laughs> <laughs> Great Northern. So Cheers. let's let's yeah. talk. So like the Cheers, let's mate. talk shirt that Glenn's wearing. Yeah. Um, is the charity that we support. So yes. any money we we sell merchandise okay. and and um, anything through the profits of the show go go to Lex. awesome. Let's talk. Awesome. Yeah. Um, awesome. So yeah. So one of the things that I noticed is when you do the weather. I always had this vision in my head, and maybe other weather people do this. And people um, at home might think the same as Jason. Yeah, and this is my okay. camera over here. Okay. So typically what, what I see when I've seen like the weather happening is you'd expect that someone's delivering the camera, yeah. and then all of a sudden you go to the chart and you go to the other picture. Yeah. So I'm thinking this is how it works. <laughs> yeah. So and so here's the forecast, cut, and then you sit there and you quickly grab this up, you read all of that, drop it down and go, so that's it, back to you, right? That's not how you do it. No. You do it from memory. Yeah. <laughs> so, here's, here's a challenge here's for a challenge you. Here's a challenge for you. I think no. I'll put snow on it so you can't Have you seen my notes? <laughs> so, what I want to do as a challenge is because yeah. you do it from memory, 
I'll give you a chance if you're happy to. Have a quick read through here. All I've right. basically done like Cairns, Townsville, Mackay, Rocky, Brisbane, Ipswich and Goldie. Yeah. With minimums and maximums and then yeah. like yeah. lightly cloudy, sunny. How long would it take you, do you think, to, to read that yeah. and then... Deliver you, it. Could you, okay. could you recite them? I'll have a look. Quite accurately. There I'll have go. a look because I haven't so, seen I'll, this. I'll throw, yeah, no, I was going to say straight up. And, and, and I've, had, I've had a couple of ales. Yeah. <laughs> so I've thrown a few curveballs in there which we wouldn't expect, right? So <laughs> up north is probably normal, but I just thought because... It's yeah. like snow and inches. That's what I'm saying, you see, no. Yeah. Well, oh, it yeah. feels like that now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Hang on. So then, like I said, and that's that's one of the things that I thought was amazing while he, he reads that. Yeah. Is is seeing Paul live? It it was funny because you have a conversation with him at a live broadcast. And he goes, "Oh, hang on, mate, I've got to do a cross." Yeah. Next thing, he's delivering down the camera. Yeah. He's doing all of the minimums and maximums and partly cloudy and the whole forecast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's back to there. And then once that's done, he goes, "Like I'm out," and then just turns and we'll. We'll continue a conversation. See, I was just like you, right? I thought that's how it happened. He did a piece, yeah. and they no. came away, and then you read off. Of, yeah. No, no. And that's, that's you get nervous. No. No. Well, wow, I am yeah. now though, because I'm like, <laughs> normally have three scotches, but anyway, <laughs> I got <laughs> scotches. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> I'm just checking our timer because we, we okay. have a tendency to, to <laughs> run over. So, like, okay, all right, I'm the no, right. Yeah, it's okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, you think you can do that? Yeah, I'll have a crack at it. All right. All right. So, um, yeah. All right. Give no. it to me so I can. Yeah, okay. we need to show the folks. And then, yeah, you, you deliver, well. deliver to that camera. Doesn't okay. have to be professional. No. Just see if you can get the the town, the minimum, maximum, and the comment. Do you want to look? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could get any of those. Oh, yeah, look, I don't no, know. I'd, I'd, do I'd struggle. All right, there you go. Over to you. See if you can. And with the weather. <laughs> Gold Coast weather. Go. Here's yeah, one last look. Oh, no, no. <laughs> All right, there, there. we're going live in three, two. Hey everybody, uh, looks as though we're going to see a little bit of shower activity pushing through across the south east. So we'll take a look at the far northern parts of the tropics to start with, starting in our friends for Cairns and Towns with a high of 27 degrees. Uh, heading back down towards Townsville now, it's going to get to about 26 degrees. So overnight lows holding steady about 21. As we head further south towards uh, Mackay, it's going to be around that 24, 23. But we are expecting a little bit of cloud to push through now. Rockhampton is going to be fairly sunny. I'll tell you what, 21 degrees possible. But down in the city of Brisbane, we're going to head further south. That's where that trough line is going to push through. Now the temperatures will start to plummet. Now we're talking 11 degrees overnight. We are heading into winter with a high of around 20. So daytime average is going to be a little bit warmer. But out the west of Ipswich, they're expecting some snow. I don't know where the hell that comes from. <laughs> and they're talking even overnight temps down to seven. And that tells me that there's been an in, a significant change in uh, the writing of that particular paragraph. Patrusa doesn't know what they're on about for the simple fact is you don't get snow at seven degrees. Uh, but down the Gold Coast, it's perfectly sunny as per normal, holding steady at around 19 to 21 degrees. Pretty good day on the Gold if you're keen to get out there and enjoy yourselves. Wow, 100%. Jesus <laughs> Christ! <laughs> There you go. Well done, mate. Thank you. That is awesome. And that's why you're on television and I'm not. No. <laughs> exactly. Uh, because I would be sitting here reading it like this. I wouldn't be looking at the camera and everything else that you're showing me. Oh, wow. Looking. Dang. That's good, mate. You're welcome. That's Sorry, did you always have a love for weather? Glenn's a good question. Um, I, I, we didn't have a lot growing up. I grew up yep. in a caravan, uh, caravan park at Labrador as a kid. Yep. And, um, and as I would, we lived next to the little boat ramp and I would go down there and I'd tie a fishing line around a reed. I'd find the fishing line on the ground and I'd learn how to tie knots to join the line together, you know, to get a length of line. I'd tie it around the reed and I'd get a little hook and I'd make it, you know, flour and, and water with a bit of cotton wool. And that was my dough mix. And I'd put that on and catch these little glasses and brim. And that's how I learned. But I'd always look outside. Wow. I remember watching Ray Wilkie on the old black and white TV. You know, the big set box. And, and he would draw up, and I'd see the highs and the lows, and I never really understood what it meant, but yep. I really worked out that when a high came, I had good weather, I could go fishing. Wow. And as I got older, when we grew up, then we moved to Coomera, um, and I'd go, right, I'm gonna ride my bike to Main Beach, is it gonna rain? And yep. I'd look and see there's a low coming, oh, it's gonna rain. Low means there's a trough, there's wind, there's southerly pushing up the coast. Oh, I don't go down, I'm gonna ride my bike into that yeah. crap, you know? Wow. And then I'd go, right, there's a high coming, I'm gonna go out, and then eventually when I started surfing, hey, there's a, a high down south, it's gonna drive some southeasterly trade winds. I go, oh, there's surfs, so I'm gonna to go to Burley, I'm not gonna go all the way down to Tweed. Yeah. I'll go to Burley, it's the closest point, it's gonna offer protection. And you so ride your bike? I'd ride my bike. Wow. And so we would do that, and then we moved to Hollywell Runaway Bay. Yep. 
and 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 that's when you know everything sort of gel and I think that's now it's that it telling the story I think to everyone at home not through a uh, I guess a, a meteorological mm. way where yep. people go you have no personality but you are telling us a story great good on you take my hat off to you but if you can tell the story that everyone can understand because that's what they're wanting to do yes yeah. exactly. that's what I do yeah, well, I know. Wow. That's cool. I mean, that's really cool. Glenn, Glenn's Thanks, got a boat yeah. license. Um, Good on you, buddy. Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> and, and I've got, obviously, both because I you know, only want to do it. Yeah, um, You had to do both. Yeah. Um, so, what was interesting in doing that and, and studying for that was understanding the weather. Yeah. Right, because how complete it can change. Absolutely. And even now, um, I watch the weather a lot more because, particularly, I say, oh, the weekend's coming up. I mm. might want to go down the Goldie with the family. It's a massive part of your life. And right? you just got to sit there yeah. and you just got to know what the weather. I've got yeah. to know whether it's going to be calm. You yeah. know what the wind's doing, whether it's going to be choppy. Yeah. Um, and then even the time of day when if something's going to move in or change, yeah. you don't want to be. You know, like if you're going over to the South Strati or you know jumping yeah. pin, and then yeah. you know you're out there and then you're expecting, or if you're not not across it. The weather's going to change and it's going to be miserable, right? Mm. And to, or even dangerous to get back. Correct. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like that for me is since getting into boating. A, a good tip for you boating. is is if, if the weather's going to come through in the morning, say it's you know ten knots, picking up twenty knots throughout the day, is look for a tide change. If there's a tide change at eleven o'clock in the morning, that's when your wind's going to hit. Ah. Okay. So you can then look at it and go right. I'm going to get out there from six a.m. to eleven. I'll be okay. Yeah. And then after that, plan your day a little bit closer to home, so yeah. you don't get caught out in the weather. Can we go back? Something you said there at the start of before when you were explaining about how you got into weather and, and and the love of weather from riding your bike and starting out and yeah. So when you said that you started with not much, and there's a lot of people in Australia that are like that. Mm. You know what I mean? That mm. might be watching the show because we you yeah. know we we're going to everyone. Yeah. Did you get hope out of fishing? Yeah, I did. Hope gave me, it, it, fishing gave me a, an excuse to get away from things in life that you didn't want to deal with. Yeah. Even as a kid. And it's cheap. It's super cheap. Absolutely. Mm, we, we, my, my grandma um, <coughs> had a house over at Amity Point, North Strat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same deal as kids. We'd get, mum would take us up to, Cleveland ferries would catch the school bus over on a Friday, spend the weekend with grandma, come back on a Monday, you know, come back to the yep. yep. But the, um, we would find fishing line on the rocks and just undo the knots and undo the tangles and cut it and cut it and rejoin it. Okay. And that's how we, that's, but that's, yeah, but you got, we didn't have money. <clears throat> uh, and that's right. Like, and, and that's the thing I'm getting off, right? Like mental health. We, we speak a lot about mental health in here. Yeah. If you're sitting at home, doesn't cost much to go and buy a three dollar, four dollar package from Anaconda or wherever, the local mm. servo. Yeah. Go and throw a line in the water yeah. with your son or your daughter or your family and just mm. get out of the bloody house. Have to. So do you find it therapeutic? Like just, just find it really like, damn you, annoying at times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this is life <laughs> lessons, right? It's life lessons. It is. It is life lessons. It's hundred percent. Um I think today when we grew up, you know, we're sort of in that same age bracket, you know, when yep. we're in our twenties. Is that you know you would um, the kids these days? Uh, uh, it's it's different society. It's different life. Yep. You know, would I let my kids do? Would, would I let my kids ride from Cooma to Main Beach now or no, Burley? No, no, not a chance kids. in the world. No. Would I let them play on the main street? No, not unless I'm at the front sitting there on a chair, generally having an yep. hour watching them. Yep. Um, it, it has changed unfortunately, and also with with social media. The mm. bullying doesn't stop at school. Yes. <laughs> you know, and we're not just talking adults. We've got to talk about the kids because they, they, they've got a lot on their shoulders. So I think if you, you are right there, Glenn, if you can take the kids away from the Xbox, mm. it's time for more tackle boxes, less Xboxes. Yeah. Get them away from that. They still got to have their yeah. phone. They still got to have that That's the bumper sticker there. More. <laughs> More tackle boxes, less Xboxes, eh? Yeah. Is that the kids have still got to have that because, yeah. you know, th that's the jobs they're moving into these days. There's yeah. a lot of technology, right? Yeah. So don't hold them back, but still at the same time, pull them back. Bring it back to be humble, right? Bring it back to more reality. Yeah, I agree. And catch fish. I yeah. agree. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And, and that's something that you can do, you know, and it's so bloody cheap and you just get out there. Like I said, I don't fish. 
but I can see that you're. I'm going to take you fishing, please, mate. I would love to go fishing go. with you, Jace. Love we're on through us. Yeah, no, right. seriously, Deal. I would love we'll to go, mate. We'll post a post a picture onto your website. So yeah, yeah, we'll go fishing. That'd be fantastic, mate. Yeah. We, we talked about it a while ago when you had your did. previous boat. Yeah. But I tell you what, your new boat's a cracker, isn't it? She's good. Oh, yes, I'm I'm a, I mean, I'm a, I'm a tech guy. We we're talking about it, right? Oh, it's pretty. And techy. forget the fishing, just the tech. Oh, the tech. When I'm sitting there, going like your electric motor on the front, and then you're sitting there, and and it's like GPS tracking the whole position and do what you oh. want. I'm sitting there going, it's crazy. Oh my God, he's taking all the fun out of it. Oh, <laughs> that's the right. thing is sick. Yeah. He, is yeah. Yeah. he was telling me, I was like, holy yeah. Jesus. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. it's pretty sick. But yeah. is, that, is it, if I get it pronounced right, it's a Surtees? Surtees, yeah. Surtees, yeah. Right. yeah. So it's from New Zealand. Like, yeah. There's a lot of great um, Australian boat builders, don't get me wrong, but it took yeah. us three years we didn't want to on the beginning of our show. That's why we used a jet ski for the first two years. Oh, yeah. You know, keep it humble, keep it simple. You don't yep. need a big boat with a billion bucks to go out there and catch a fish. Yeah. So we did it on a jet ski. Yeah. Everyone can do it. Yeah. So, and then we, we finally got this boat that we wanted yeah. to get. A TV goes to sleep. Yeah, I'll just turn it back on. <laughs> right yeah, keep going. Yeah. Oh, we're so we, 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 we're we, we, we got the boat and, um, and, and it helps us now get to where we need to get to, which is pretty cool. And it looks great because, I mean, once again, Knowing, like you talk about weather and being out in the elements, so you've got the closed cabin, right? You've yeah. The back section as well. It's like it's got really low um, sides and that, so it's perfect yeah. platform to fish off. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I was telling Glenn about that I really loved, and like the lazy IT guy, is your electric rip. <laughs> yeah. How good's yeah. that? It's, so it's just sitting there. You're just going, oh, I've got one. You just click it into oh, here, whatever. So and the thing's just going. It's a lazy way of fishing. Like, oh, oh, I'm just pulling this way. Dude, oh, we we fish. It, we're <laughs> fishing a thousand feet of water up to fifteen hundred feet of water and you 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 know it's three hundred meters. It's, it's yeah. three three to six hundred meters is what oh, we normally fish. Yeah. yeah. And it's a long way. You you hook into these things that are as big as you know as as we are, tall, yeah. they're big fish and they've got big mouths and big eyes and they get barrel trauma when they come up through the air pressure and all that and they yeah. blow things. But the it's, stomach coming out a, oh, when I first saw that yeah. I thought that must have been some so the float you had on a no. deep sea lure or something. No, that's it's because they're scar. coming up from such depth oh. that the it's eyes, like the, bends. the eye, yeah, the pressure change. Correct. Wow. So the exactly. eyes, eyes and bulge out and the stomach comes out their mouth and it looks like a, a float. Oh, I'd say it's it, gutting them. It does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I caught one the other day. Sorry, they had a diver come out of his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> was that in America? <laughs> did you catch I a whale? <laughs> I did, I did, yeah, no, you, the whales, uh, you know, that's a, that's another topic because to me, whales, you, I don't know what we're going to do okay. with a whale, right? You can't go and open up whale slaughtering, you can't go and kill the whale, yeah. right? They're protected species. Some of the great white shark, and this is a, a problem we, we're going to get, Okay. but we are at the moment, is that whales are becoming a, a marine hazard in the sense that you go out fishing or you go boating and you're seeing a lot more incidents occurring by boats hitting whales yeah. oh wow and it's really hard because we've got 30 uh, nearly forty thousand whales on the east coast of the country alone and we have those boat. we have <laughs> it's a whale, right? it's a whale. so, yeah. so you, you if you're going out fishing you don't know when one's going to pop up in front of you yeah and you can keep a good visual eye look out but unfortunately um you know boats are hitting whales yeah. are they really and, yeah i've heard yeah. a lot of a lot of whales yeah. like they're watching Imagine if you're on a jet ski you're like a motocross jump <laughs> Yeah, yeah, on the tail. The tail just, you're gone. Yeah. Just Sorry. Like, I, don't, I don't condone <laughs> that to animals no. by any means, but that's, you know. What I mean, right? Well, if they're breaching, like, yeah, like you're it's, sitting there and they just come up. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. not like you're encroaching on them. No. They're swimming yeah. through. And guys, I know uh, quite a few guys who have been anchored up on their local reef. And because a lot of whales travel in close, right? And, and as the whales have come past, because they've got big pectoral fins and they're, they're a beautiful. I've never beautiful, seen one. Oh my god, oh, yeah. I'll take you a while watching yeah. these things. Also. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, so we're tuna we're fishing and while watching. We're going to fish into the whale expedition. They are so majestic. They are a beautiful creature. Okay. What time, sorry, what time do we leave? 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. back by 11. That's all we need. We don't need 20 minutes. Only if the tide doesn't change and the winds are good. 20 minutes fishing, fill the esky. I know what you're saying. The, the wires are hooking the anchor ropes ah. on their petrol fins. So old mate sitting there, you know, with his slouch hat on, with his fishing rod out. <laughs> Next minute, he's doing 20 knots like this straight away. <laughs> and, you know, and the whale's got the, the so it's not cool. Yeah, it's not so cool. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how things are going to go in the next. I wouldn't even say five years. Imagine in the next 10 or 20 years. Do you see them on your sonar? 
Absolutely. They yeah, come so you'd be sitting there, blob. sitting there going, oh, he's a school of fish, and next thing there's, there's like a mate, you see, the, you, see, you see one of those things come, and you're, you're on the key, and you're out. And you're, oh, you don't really? know what they're going to do. Yeah. 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 But I, I, I recall one time, um, an orcas, killer whales, right? Yeah. I've never seen killer whales off the coast until, oh, I was probably back in the, the late 90s, maybe 2000, 2001. And these kill, there was a, a known pod of killer whales coming up the east coast. We were out there fishing, and these killer whales came up beside the boat and literally jumped out of the water. I'm looking at him. Oh, Jesus. So I've gone this way. And, <laughs> and then a mate who was out fishing for snapper, he's in his centre console, he's fishing away for his snapper, and he's, he said, he had this eerie feeling, he's turned around, and here's this fin, taller than he is, just sitting there, this whale, killer whale, looking at him. Oh. He, he hit the deck and light up and turned the key on and just put the throttle down and oh he pissed off out of there real fast. You know, Did they attack you? We, we, well, we don't know anything about killer whales up here because we don't know don't anything about killer yeah. whales. But they're not all friendly whales, right? So well, don't do it. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think they would do anything to you, but yeah. they're just inquisitive creatures. They're very smart. But yes. Maybe divers would know. be different because I've seen killer whales on footage. Like They just flip um, seals and that around like they're nothing to kill them. Yeah, exactly. Right. So if you're a yeah. scuba diver and they mistake you for a seal, I think you'd be yeah. in trouble. But maybe... I, don't know. I, I did go into the wet zone over at SeaWorld in San Diego. And, yeah, I, and they had, um, there's the wet zone. I didn't know what the wet zone was because it was my first time there. <laughs> so I sat there and I think it was Shamu or someone came out there and flicked its tail and literally it was like someone had a fire truck of a fire hose. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's called the wet zone. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the name wasn't a giveaway. <laughs> I, I didn't know. I just, I just went, oh, there's some front row seats. No, we just <laughs> called the wet zone the, yeah, the best well, seats in the house. Well, it was dry to start with yeah. and I didn't know. It gets so, you in there. I, I, I got wow. sucked in, suck it in. We, yeah. did, we did that at Speedway. People turn up to Speedway for the first time and you go, go sit on the front of the fence. And they get flicked with mud. <laughs> what? Well, no, no, in the front not taken. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Wear the nice there. white shirts. <laughs> you get looked after. Take your missus down the yeah. front. Front row seats. Yeah, yeah. Kids do tickets. I think the first time I took my kids, you know, we're all sitting up at the top of the bank, you know. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know, Uncle Glenn's coming out shortly. I'll they go down, stand on the front, and don't do it. <laughs> Next thing they come back and they've been pelted by the mud because it stings. Yes. You get absolutely drilled by you, the you're mud. going fast, aren't you? Yeah, like, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You know. yeah, the midgets are quick, yeah. And most people like cars, are, sprint cars are faster, but I think sprint cars tip in at Archer Field at about 140k an hour wow. into the corner, and it's literally a hairpin on dirt. So yeah, it's about and so what did you? What did I you ran notice? a midget, which yeah. is a speed car, better known as a speed car, which is yeah. a four cylinder naturally aspirated yeah. and uh, makes about 300 horsepower and Ooh. similar, we, we're about two seconds a lot faster, we probably tip in at about 120 but we don't have any aerodynamic help. Wow, so, so you don't have the, the big pants. things on the top. Yeah, oh, that's no. right. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you see the pants. Photo up here, you see that yeah. car yes. in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, right. so okay. 300 and, I think that made 305 horsepower, weighed 400 kilos. Bloody hell. Yeah, so if, you, uh, if you sit in it, you're literally strapped in with an engine between your legs. Yeah, wow. Yeah, and the drive shaft goes out to the wheel between and you your legs and yeah, wow. dip under your bum. Yeah, okay. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're strapped Does it get hot? Yes. Very hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's about 65, 70 degrees in the cockpit. Is that what it's, like, is that what it's called, like a hot lap or something? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what happens We there? call them a cockpit because it's just a cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> it's female drivers now, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no. More and more taken back. <laughs> We've pretty much run out of time to wrap Thanks, this man. up. So Glenn's okay, got something for you. I have got you. something for you. Oh, Paul. well. Thank you very much for coming up to see oh, us today. Thanks, mate. No worries. Thank mate, you. As you know, Ted oh. was my dad. And um, Thank you, he mate. was very good in the community, and yep. um, so we'd like to give you a Ted Chet show. Thanks, buddy. No worries. Appreciate it, mate. Thank, thank you so thank much. You for coming up. Really I really, really, it. no, I mate, Jace, yeah, thank no, you so yeah, much, mate. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no that's awesome. There yeah. you have it. There you go. Yay! Yeah. The consummate professional delivering to camera. On that note, we'll wrap it up. Thanks for watching the Ted Chet. We'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. See you, guys. Real pleasure to have Paul Bird in the studio with us today here Thanks, in the mate. Ted Shed. Um, if you want to follow us and support the Ted Shed, make sure you follow us on, on Patreon. You can subscribe there. Um, and Paul, what else should they do? Uh, like, subscribe, and as you know, if you're a YouTuber, beat that bell! Excellent. See you next time.